and welcome to Traditional Painting the Digital Way. This is where I use digital painting apps to teach traditional painting techniques. In this video, we're going to be doing part three of my Guitar Man portrait series, and we're going to be working on the face and the figure. If you want to follow along with traditional materials, check out part one in this series where I have a list of all the paint, canvases, and the brushes that I use. And I would mainly be using acrylic paint. The app that I'm going to be using is Corel Painter 2020 for Windows. And we're going to go ahead and start out by working a little bit more on the, the shape of his face and the body and trying to get the portrait into a little bit more of a, a rough um, state where you can start adding a little bit of detail. So here I'm just kind of working a little bit on the shape of his shirt <clears throat> and his hat and I'm adding a little bit of some white now to the shirt. Previously, I had a light blue color underneath because that's going to be the shadows that show the wrinkles on your shirt. And so here I've got a little bit of a lighter color. It's still not going to be a pure white. And um, you don't want to do that till you do your final uh, highlights there. And then I'm just kind of working on the shape of his vest and trying to get just kind of the general uh, look of it. We don't want any big details yet. We're not anywhere near the big detail stage. So I'm using my uh, photo reference window in Corel Painter, which I uh, comes in very handy. I really like that. I like painting programs that have photo reference windows. It's much, much handier than having to use a third party app. And so you can zoom around on it and um, zoom in on it and things like that. And it's quite helpful. And I'm just kind of adding a little bit of some blue highlights to the vest. The vest is probably black. But <clears throat> since I've um, lightened this photo, it, it shows that the highlights are a sort of a bluish color. And so... When you lighten the photo, that just helps you be able to see where all the wrinkles are. And that's what I'm working on here. And the shape of his collar, and I'm smudging everything out with the coarse oily blender. I like that one, and just add water. And if you're following along traditionally, um, you can use your finger to smudge or a Kleenex. But you want to kind of smudge these edges out. You don't want any real hard edges you want smooth edges here and so i'm working on the face here and don't panic at this point if it looks all distorted because it's supposed to because you're not you're not working on the the details right now you just want the placement of features you want to show where things are so it is going to look distorted at this point so don't don't get alarmed because it doesn't look like the photo. You want to work up to that. You're trying to right now just kind of get the the eye placement, the nose placement, the mouth placement, the shadows. So you're kind of just working and gradually modeling this face up, sort of like if you were working in clay too. You want to try to just get the shapes of the highlights of where his nose is and and the shadows of the eyes and things like that. And I'm just working a little bit more on the shape of his hat. And but you want to keep these lines smooth. You don't want to, you don't want any hard lines. You want to keep everything smooth right now. We're just trying to get the placement of the shadow and the light on his face. And so here, that's what I'm doing. I'm just um, working on the outer um, shape of his face there. And here I've zoomed back. And what you do, if you're working traditionally, is just step back from the canvas quite a ways, about six feet or so, and see how things are looking. And make sure you have your photo reference next to it so that you can see it. 
And then here I'm adding some more shadows and trying to get the shape of his eyes. And again, we're not going to add any pupils or anything yet. We just are working on the shadows right now. And for shadow color, you can use burnt umber, burnt sienna, um, some purples, some blues. You just want a, a darker reddish color. And then here's the little trick that I use to make sure that the features are all straight. So you can take an extra layer in Corel Painter <laughs> that doesn't have anything on it and go ahead and draw your guidelines to make sure that your eyes are lined up. And then the nose, the, end, the edge of the nostrils of the nose generally line up to the corner of your eyes. And then the mouth, <clears throat> in order to get the width of the mouth, the mouth usually comes to about halfway through your the eyes. It's maybe not quite exactly halfway, but it's pretty close. And that's how you can tell whether the mouth is too big or too little. You want it to go about halfway through the eyes. And then the nose, um, your ear, the top of your ear lines up with the top of your eyebrows and the bottom of your ear usually lines up with the bottom of your nose. <clears throat> and these are just kind of general proportions that um, fit a human face. They're going to vary a little bit. Some people have longer ears. They may have, um, you know, their, their mouths may be a little bit smaller, but that's the general proportions of a face. And so you kind of want to keep those guidelines there. And then when you're through making sure that you've got everything kind of lined up, you can go ahead and hide that layer. And if you're working traditionally, you can just draw out those little guidelines on a piece of tracing paper or something and put that over the face. Of course, you have to be working in acrylics <clears throat> in order to just put that on there because you don't want to smudge your paint. But something like that a little bit for a guideline there. And that just kind of helps you keep the features correct. And then here I've just kind of got the features um, drawn in with a darker color. I'm not going to keep that darker color because we want all those lines to sort of be smudged out. Uh, a lot of mistakes that people make are that they leave hard lines in on their portrait. The more that there are hard lines on your portrait, the older your subject looks. So if you want your subject to look really old, then you leave a lot of hard lines, but you, you know, this subject is not old. And so, I mean, he's an older man, but he's not a real, real old man. So you don't want those hard lines to show up on the, on the guitar player. So you're going to go ahead and uh, soften those lines. I've got them right now just as guidelines, but I'm going to cover them up. And here I'm just kind of adding some different colors to the nose. Um, any flesh color that you want to make with acrylics can be made with cadmium red light and cadmium yellow. And then add white acrylic gesso. And you can throw in uh, phthalo yellow green, some burnt siennas, um, some purples, dioxazine purple, ultramarine blue, even a little bit of hooker's green. And those will all give you your flesh tones. And the more greens that you add and um, blues, it, it's a darker brown. It makes it a little bit darker. So you want to go ahead and use those for your shadow colors and use more yellows and light pinks for your highlights. And so here I'm just kind of smoothing everything out. I've added a little bit of blue to his chin to give that a reflected highlight because there's light reflecting off of his vest there. So we want to kind of show that because that gives depth into um, the shadowed side of his face and, and shows the contours of his face. And then here I'm just trying to work on the nose and trying to get the highlight there and the shape of the nostrils. And you can turn your little guide on and check and see what it looks like and make sure that you've got it um, correct and not that it's off center or that it's crooked and so you can use that to correct that and then you can go over the darker lines again and 
um, start smoothing those down, smoothing the features of the face. And you zoom out to check and see what, how it's looking. And as you can see, it's starting to look not so distorted. It's starting to become more of a likeness and, and be more like a, a human face. And so you just have to keep doing that and keep working on it as a process. And then here I'm adding these lines as shadows, but I'm not going to keep them. I'm going to smudge them out and, and smooth them. <clears throat> I'm also working on the eyebrows and you kind of make a little bit of some rough strokes, but we're not showing individual hairs. We just kind of want to show the general shape of the eyebrows and the brow line. And I'm just kind of going all around it <clears throat> with the real long bristle brush, which kind of gives a really soft um, look in a Corel painter and then use just add water to smudge it out and I would probably use a number six round or a short script brush if I'm um, painting this traditionally because uh, we're starting to get a little bit more into the detail work here and then I'm just kind of adding some shadows adjusting the shape of his chin smoothing all that out you notice I haven't put the pupils in yet, and I don't put that in until I've got the shape of the eyes. You want to try to get the shape of the eyes correct first. Working a little bit on the shadow of his shirt and around the collar, and you would use a, a burnt umber color if you're following along traditionally, and just try to, um, <clears throat> try to get the wrinkles on the shirt and the shape of his collar. And I'll do more of that later. I try to get the general shapes first and then add the final details to the wrinkles on the shirt and all that more towards the end. And so I'm just kind of trying to put some general placement there of where these uh, wrinkles are going to be. And it's just kind of an overall process of building it up. It's, um, you can just kind of, I would suggest not trying to finish one tiny section, but to go all over your picture, your painting, and build things up at kind of the same pace. Now I do like to usually get the face finished first and then work on the clothes and the hands. But you kind of want to get it all sort of at the, at the same time, the sort of general level of completedness at the same time. It just helps um, things look not so uh, distorted and it, and it helps you judge as to uh, the progress in your picture. So you kind of need to, to work all around your picture and not just concentrate on one single area. So this is the end of uh, Guitar Man Part 3. In Part 4, we're going to start working more on the eyes and adding some more um, details to the face and try to get the face a little bit more finished. So if you want to see that, then hit the subscribe button. And thanks everybody for watching. Thank you so much for your support. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments down below. And I will catch you later.